Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to something completely different. So I guess I can't welcome you back there if you've never been there since it's... You know what? Never. Let's start over. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, today I'm bringing you uh, one of, if not the first in a series of, vids about games I've made. I have made very few games that I consider worth sharing and talking about, but uh, for those of you who don't know, I used to do computer science and programming as an undergraduate, and uh, as a hobby of mine, I like making games, and here's a game I've made. Another uh, thing that you all probably know about, about me by now is that I like shmups, or first, not first person shooters, uh, space shooters, where you fly a ship around and avoid bullets and blow shit up, and this is my, uh, this is one of such game that I've made. Um, yeah, not sure what else to say to advertise the point, but, uh, you know, um, I'll show you, I'll show you around. So, menu screen, pretty basic, uh, it took me a while to figure out how to make that rainbow cycling effect happen, but it was pretty, I was pretty proud of myself for coming up with that formula. Uh, difficulty levels from all the way from too easy to expert, uh, I, fun fact, I used to call normal easy, and it was just easy, medium, hard, but then people wanted something below normal, so I... Put something below normal. Um, can play on hard today, I guess. Uh, nah, let's play on normal. Let's play on normal. Eh, hard, hard. Uh, this is a uh, start button, which does exactly what it sounds like. And these are the different game modes. Uh, there's the dodge mode, which was the original. Then there's grazer mode, which was the improved version of dodge mode IMO. Ikaruga mode, lockdown mode, and mission mode. Uh, I will go through all of these uh, before I'm done today. Let's start off with the basic dodge mode, I guess, and we're playing on hard, so so be it. Dodge mode is as simple as it sounds. Classic mode, earn points for surviving, a direct hit on the green flashing on the in the flashing green dot kills you. Which flashing green dot? Well, as the help menu explains, there is a single green pixel, I don't know if you can see it or not, flashing in the center of this ship. If it is hit by a bullet directly, you die. However, even things within the yellow circle don't count towards uh, that death, and so you can dodge even as bullets pass through your ship. In fact, if they pass through your ship, it's called grazing, grazing a bullet. And I think uh, in some modes you get more points or more value for doing that. But this is the basic dodge mode. It's pretty simple. You get a different number of lives based on how, uh, how what difficulty you've set the game at. And uh, turrets start spawning, and you, I call them turrets, and you can see that there's various different kinds of turrets on the screen already. At any given time, there can be X number of turrets. That number gets higher and higher the longer you survive. Um, you get more points for every second survived. I think it's five points per second, roughly. And your goal is to survive. Yeah, not exactly that complicated. But you'll notice that that survival becomes harder and harder as the complexity of the bullet patterns goes up. Um, and again, uh, I always include a help help option with my my games. Either you press F1 or do something else to reach the help menu. And that lists all the controls, so that way I don't feel obligated to explain the controls in-game to my players. Though, you know, having played enough games nowadays, I realize I probably shouldn't have added that, but I'm not a gaming studio. I'm a guy who makes games so that he can have fun playing them alone. Anyway, and, and part of the th one of the things I really like is just how well all of the different turrets mesh, uh, so that it actually looks rather pretty just at a glance to see this chaotic jumble of bullets take form. Um, fun fact: there are a total of two two different sprites I used, uh, one for the turret, one for the bullets, and that covers pretty much every graphic in the game. Uh, there's the starfield in the background and the spaceship, of course. I guess those are separate. And then there's the mute button and the button that I use... The button itself that I use for all of my buttons, but, uh... Yeah, it's pretty pretty limited in terms of what graphics you need to load, which was a design choice, honestly. To try and keep this as simplistic as possible. Whew. Yeah. Dodging between these things is a lot harder than it seems. And weaving while talking is too. But as you can see, this, this is the kind of game that would appeal to somebody who has skill in uh, playing uh, Ikaruga or games of its sort. Uh, psychedelic snakes coming down the pathway. Uh, I've actually gained a, I gained an extra life for surviving as long as I did, but I lost it just now. 
Oh yeah, and that big blue circle, I guess, is another graphic. And then I have a graphic for my bullet animation. So anyway, there's a few graphics, but but it's a minimal pack on purpose. Graphics are used. Wow. Okay, that's two. There's a lot of snakes on the screen right now. I... Okay, there we go. I opted to use that screen wipe technique because it technically keeps all of the bullet launchers but removes all the bullets. So there's the squi the screen is quick to repopulate with dangerous while still guaranteeing that you will not be in danger the moment you respawn. I mean, you won't die the moment you respawn. You don't have an invincibility period, as it were, but you can't outrun the blue wave, so you end up being effectively invincible for that moment. And that's game over. Uh, not bad for a first run. Uh, this used to be for online score submission. Unfortunately, that feature no longer functions, and uh, it even says as much disabled at this time. But, uh, yeah, that's dodge mode. So that's what I had at first for this game. Once I had dodge mode created, though, I realized that I could do more stuff with it. I kept coming up with ideas, so I made lockdown mode and Ikaruga mode. Let's uh, change up the in-game music just so we don't hear the same music the whole day. Uh, title search should do fine. And we'll do... Ikaruga mode, I think, will be a cool one to show off next. You are given a colored shield around your ship, like in Ikaruga! Earn points for absorbing like-colored bullets. Pressing F toggles the shield color. Okay, simple enough. So right now my ship is green, now it's red, now it's blue. I'm eating all your red bullets, son! And you can see my score is going up two at a time for each bullet absorbed. Which is exactly how it should be. Mm, come on... Okay. You know, it's such a change going from the complexity of before to the simplicity of here. The reason that this shield has three colors is because of the difficulty I selected. At higher difficulties you get more colors, at lower difficulties you get less. On the beginner difficulty, there's only two colors on the shield. Like an actual Likaruga. It's cool too, because this is the only mode of the game, the only time in the whole game actually, where the color matters at all. And it's nice to be like, you're trying to hug a turret as an option. Hmm. Oh, what is that gonna explode into? Green. Gotcha. Blue. There's always score to be got by, you know, grabbing more bullets. Anyway, I think that, uh, You know, I keep feeling like I say, alright, that's enough to get the idea- Whoa, there was a blue bullet, bullet buried in there I didn't notice. Oh, that's so much money! Avoid the red, grab the green, avoid the red, grab the green. See, that would have been a great thing to be in the middle of. Oh! I thought I was blue, but I was green. Damn it. But yeah, that's the game. It's a lot of fun, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kill myself right now so that we can get on with showing off the other modes. There's not really a whole lot more to add to this. Oh, I guess technically the snake is completely unabsorbable, so it actually has a another function in this game. Next, main menu, please. Dodge mode, Ikaruga mode. Lockdown mode is actually a mode I like a lot. I'm gonna switch to another song. Uh, this actually used to be like the default music I would use for the game, but I switched to the Axelay music because it's better. And th this one I'm just gonna jump straight to hard mode because I feel like it. Lockdown mode. A glowing star will appear. A glowing star will appear. Target it with the reticule and use spacebar before it explodes. WSAD repositions the reticule, and five you get uh, five times as many points when the star is red. It'll be easier to understand when you see it in play. So you'll notice how there is a cursor around my ship, and there's a blue trail pointing me in a direction. That's the growing star. If you wait too long, it explodes, and you get no points for it. If, on the other hand, you hover over it and grab it, you get points. You only get, like... Two or three, you get a small amount of points in general, but if you grab it when it's red, you get a lot of points. So the game rewards you for waiting to the last possible second. Well, and it's, it is a bigger window than a second, granted. 
but then it explodes, so you find yourself in proximity to a massive number of bullets if you wait too long. It's, uh, certainly a consideration. And of course, if you just try to spam spacebar, you get that beeping noise, and uh, it flashes, and it, the cursor flashes and makes it clear that you are inactive until it, it reactivates. That'll do. For this level, I think the biggest uh, difficulty modifiers were how short the red window is, and how many lives you get. But yeah, there we go. That's uh, that's that level. Or that's that style of game. Then there's Grazer Mode. And I'll be honest, when I'm playing Grazer Mode, I like picking my own music. So I go to in-game music, my music. Uh, we'll definitely want to put this on uh, expert. I don't want it to last too long. I think that reduces the lives significantly. Okay, and now I have to search through my computer till I find the music uh, that I want to do. It didn't occur to me that I was going to have to do this or I would have left something pick, picked out nice and early. Let's go with... Um, hmm. All these would make good choices. Ooh. This won't match the speed of the game at all, but it would have been a great choice. Night of Nights. Just for the Toho sake. Hmm. Gotta pick something. do waves. I have good memories of that game. Grazing bullets powers up your weapons. Use your arsenal to destroy bullets and earn points. Q and E switches weapons. WSAD fires a single shot. F fires rapidly. So, notice that this red bar is growing at the top. That is my energy. It uses energy to fire weapons. There is a minimum re uh, required energy, and then, yeah, you fire the weapon. Grazing a bullet restores energy a hell of a lot more rapidly than just waiting. So the idea is, graze, fire. And when your bullets hit their bu the bullets on the screen, you get points. Okay, there. My energy is all filled up. Uh, the different weapons you have include uh, E, which places a mine. Right? Uh, F, which you can pull down as long as you like to let out a plasma trail, as I like to call it. Um, uh, absorb. Okay. There's space bar, which for half your energy will let off a massive clears the screen explosion, which is you know always a good always a good one to have handy. You can also stay on top of your mines to you know protect your weak spot, but they will dissipate by themselves over time. Uh, what else? What else? There's the directional ones, which let you push your way into waves. Also, these uh, barricades that I'm dropping, these mines, can only handle so many bullets before they explode, so consider that too when relying on them. Come on. But yeah, this mode really makes you test your ability to graze bullets, since you basically don't get energy nearly fast enough otherwise. Go ahead and ult. Boom. All of that is cleared. I don't think that you have enough energy to use the uh, the spacebar move, the whole screen one twice in a row. I have to double check. Yes, you do. You have exactly enough energy to do it twice in a row. It depletes your whole energy stock. Alright, let's go ahead and graze me some bullets. That's good. Oh! Oh my god! Where the hell did that come from? Notice that my mind was directly on top of that, so it absorbed a lot. Let me try to get an extra life. This is another thing you can do. You can follow a turret down and keep mining its way so that it all of its bullets are released inside your mines. Unfortunately, uh, that costs a shit ton of energy to do. So you need to regenerate energy when you're done. Oh, and that's the other thing. If you're trying to hide inside of a mine, the snake will almost inevitably be what knocks you out. I did manage to get an extra life, I believe, but just in time to die. 
these snakes are gonna get me if I'm not careful. Good, full, clear. Let's see if I can't smother this one. There we go. Ah, there we go, there we go. Good. Clear. And all of those collisions count too, so it's not like just doing that just gets rid of bullets. If I was going to rebalance this ever, I would probably say that using the big circle doesn't get you points or doesn't get you as many points because it's very easy to just find a way to get energy, hit spacebar. Find a way to get energy, hit spacebar. Although the energy cost is pretty damn high. But yeah, I've gained another two lives just doing this. And I lost one of them, so maybe I should shut my mouth. Last life, and... And again, the level does keep becoming more and more complex. There's obviously way more bullets and snakes and such on the screen at once now than there used to be. Well, I'm downed, so uh, that's that. These are all of the basic game modes. And then there's the non-basic game mode. The one that I like to consider the game's default, mission mode. For this one, uh, let's switch it over to hard and... Uh, do I have time? Yeah, I've got time. I'm going to show you guys this one and then that's it. In hard mode, or sorry, in mission mode, the bar at the top signifies a timer. You have to survive that long against whatever bullet combinations the game throws at you. Uh, and each level has a spec pre pre programmed uh, set of possible values it can throw at you. Ooh, wow! This is the whirlwind. Damn it! If you blow for any reason, the game doesn't immediately restart you. Instead. It gives you a chance to see, watch the pattern uh, and try and come up with strategies like, oh, when it spreads out, maybe this is a good spot to be hiding in. Then when you're ready, you hit T to reboot. You have three reboots, well, lives. And I say reboot because listen to this. That sounds like a reboot to me. Anyway, uh, you'll notice that it's way more spread out this time than it was last time. Like I said, every level is a little bit random. There are some variables that are programmed in a range, and I had to do extensive playtesting to come up with values that would work well, but uh, I did said playtesting and it totally worked. Okay, let's see if this works. I think this is a good spot to just be standing. It certainly looks like everything's lining up just right. Damn it! Death egg. Well, it killed me. So named because it reminded me of an egg at first, and just calling it egg would have been stupid, so death egg. Also, the choice of colors are pseudo -ran are, are partially randomized as well. Uh, some levels I want certain colors, some levels it's different, some levels I let it pick from a set of values, but each time designed to try and be cool looking. Like, I'm pretty sure this one was blue-yellow every time as Death Egg as well. Anyway. But yeah, that, the fact that it's a little random means there's never going to be a spot that is guaranteed to be totally safe to just stand there, hopefully. There's no dead zones, ever. There are easier zones, certainly, than others, like, you know, just naturally looking at the way this level's working out, a full circle, uh, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna hang around away from the center of those guys. Like, being in the center of the screen would be a terrible idea in this level. Okay, that's it, I'm out of lives. When you run out of lives, you enter free mode. You have as many lives as you like. You can die. And try again. And again. And again. Or, you can use the cheat and press N to skip the level. And this is the way for people who, like myself, if I was just to download someone else's random game off the internet, don't want to actually spend the time and energy to beat the whole game, just try out other levels. Ooh, I particularly like this level. Because you wait for the bullets to uh, expand, and then there's never a crack. And it's like, oh shit! And then you die, and then you realize it's called the blender, and it looks like a blender. This is a fun level. I'm not going to show you how to do it, like you guys figure it out yourselves. Eyes on You is another fun one. Uh, so named because these uh, guns 
they lock onto your present position and fire. So as you start avoiding bullets, it becomes really, really convoluted. And it actually resembles sinister eyes. Here, I'll show you. Um, when the bullets cross each other, notice the shape they make and tell me you don't see a pair of eyes. One blue, purple, white, one red, green. I like this so much that I made a snapshot of it, the, uh, the splash screen of the game. This level has a very easy solution too. If you can solve it, have fun with that. And there's the grid. And you know what? I'm gonna stop here. I don't want to give away the remaining missions. There's a total of 12. Uh, if you're interested, uh, download the game and try it out. It's a fun game, it's pretty straightforward, and as you can see, it doesn't take a lot to learn the controls. Hope you all had a good time watching this, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed uh, this walk through my little game. I, I will uh, I will try and post a link to where you can download it in my in the comments for the vids, and I will see you guys next time.